Well, hello, spiritual walkers. This is Apostle Lisa Grace, and welcome to my world. And what a beautiful world it is. Um, and thank you for allowing me to be in your world, spiritual walkers. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful Monday, December the 2nd, 2019. Well, what's happening in my world? There are things that I like to discuss. And we want to talk about and discuss unforgiveness. Let's talk about that, spiritual walkers. Let's talk about unforgiveness. And let's talk about why we shouldn't have unforgiveness. Unforgiveness can lead to many attributes. What comes with unforgiveness? Resentment. Anger. Pain. Hatred. Animosity, always confrontational. Um, <laughs> because when you have unforgiveness, it's embedded in your heart. And out of the heart, the issues of life speak. So when people wrong us or hurt us or disrespect us or just do something that dehumanized us, we tend to get angry. We get angry, we can become resentment, we can, you know, all the things, hatred, you know, confrontations, um, pain, everything comes with this, uh, this root of we call unforgiveness. Um, there's no trust, that, you know, there's no hope, you know, it's just one thing spiral to the next. That's what unforgiveness can do. And what happens with all of that, you have the stress, you have your health going down, you know, you're social deprived, you, you know, you don't trust anybody, you don't have faith or hope even in yourself. You don't even forgive yourself because you fell trapped to someone else's devices that hurt you. And so now you feel you can't even trust yourself, that you don't have good people's sense <laughs> of judgment. Or yes, we can become very judgmental and, and our conditions can become a very spiral down. And I have experienced people not having this animosity against me because maybe I didn't do something or maybe I hurt their, you know, sometimes you got people, you don't have to do nothing. They just don't like you. <laughs> And I've experienced having to ask for forgiveness as well as receive forgiveness, right? And one thing you want to do is be very quick to forgive and you want to be very quick to receive forgiveness. So the best thing to do is be very quick about it so that you can deal with your heart. When people, people that don't want to forgive you, you tend to going to have to basically um, just give them over to the Lord. You know, if they're mean to you, you continue to stay nice, respectful, and give them over to the to the Lord. I always give their heart. I say, God, I give them over into your hands for you to deal with their heart concerning me. So whatever they have concerning me to why they don't want to forgive me or why they just don't like me or for whatever reason that I may done that they felt that was wrong in their judgment or their beliefs, then I have to give them over to the Lord for the Lord to deal with their heart regarding me. And I'm for sure people probably had to do the same thing for me, turn me over to the Lord concerning my heart towards them so best thing for you to do is to definitely make sure you forgive very quickly you may not forget you may not um you know be there yet to really like get back in the hustle and bustle of friends but it's a start start somewhere even just let your faith have you to forgive and your faith will make everything well within your heart. Then you can go back to communion. Now, let's talk about communion. And let's talk about how does communion interacts with forgiveness. In the Bible, 
the scripture says that the reason why you all are sick or you have sick among you is because you take communion with unforgiveness in your heart. You have animosity or, or anger or, or resentment towards, and we take communion with all of that in us, and that's why we are sick. Um, think about it. Analyze yourself. Think about who you haven't forgiven. Think about your pain in your body when you think about it. How it gets stressful, you get a headache, you may get a pain or some sort of agony something, you know, heart condition, cancer. All these things with unforgiveness will cause the sickness to come among you. And we're taking communion with these things, unforgiveness we call it, within us. We're taking communion and we're... We're taking it with resentment, pain, hurt, anger, all these things, unforgiveness. We're taking communion, not realizing that we have unforgiveness in our heart towards somebody or even towards yourself, God, or some higher being. But when we talk about communion, we're not just talking about what you take in church, the bread and the wine. Bread and the wine is an indication or symbolic of what communion is. We eat together, we drink together. Now, guys, how many of us realize we're literally taking communion with our family, with our friends, with our co-workers, yes, with our church members, with our center members, with whatever organization you're a part, entrepreneur members, uh, network members, investors, you're networking, you're, you're, you're communion even with yourself when you eat by yourself or when you commune or talk or have a conversation within yourself, that's a form of communion. You're eating and drinking together and we're taking communion every day, all day. We're having communion with the gods on this earth. We're having communion with God who is what? Inside us. He is us. We are what? One. There's no separation between I and God. We are one together. You know, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are all one collectively doing a different job on or or on the a different assignment but producing increase and our objective is to get the same results. So think about it when you're communion with yourself, when you're communion with God, having prayer, you know, meditating, you know, fasting, all of these things when you say you're praying with God, that's a form of communion. We union, and yet we have all this stuff on the inside of us that's going on, and that's why we're sick. That's why people are having heart surgery, open heart surgery. That's why people are having headaches. I had when the Lord showed me when that when the God Himself, we are one. When he began to download and say, Lisa, communion is not about bread and water bread and wine. It is a symbolic of communion with oneself, communion with me. We eat and we drink together. We share the same air. We share the same, occupy the same space. And yet we commune with each other every day through conversation, through activities, through worship, all kind of ways we commune with each other. And when we do that, and we have this animosity inside of us. And we have this thing about us going on that sometimes we don't want people to know we have unforgiveness. And sometimes we'll tell somebody we have forgave them. And truly, have we really forgave them? Not to the sense that you're saying, well, I'm not going to forget what they did for me. If that's not the purpose for forgiveness. Forgiveness is to release you and release those agony pains 
that we go through from those calls towards us from that individual. It releases us from the stress, the pain, the agony that we can't believe this person did that. But when they come and they acknowledge what they did with an apology, that's worth your value. That's worth who you are for them to recognize and be accountable uh, for you to be accountable for your actions to what you said and done towards someone or what someone said and done towards you that means they value the relationship they value your feelings they value themselves they have integrity to come back and and and, and reclaim what they done and ask for your apology and when they haven't yet done it again give it over to the lord over to God, the higher power, whoever that is, whom you see as your higher power. Give it over, give their heart over to the Lord or that higher power and allow the higher power, God, who is the higher power of all, however God is image to you is God, then guess what? He work with their heart concerning you. Doesn't he?